Hi, everybody. Um, thanks so much for the Interact team for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm here to speak about creating healthy and productive workplaces, and I'll be drawing on some research that we've done at the Enterprise Research Centre, where I'm based, um, at the University of Warwick, um, and uh, give you an overview of some of that research that we've been doing. So just to give you uh, an overview of the presentation that I'll run through today, the main question that I'm concerned with is how do we create the kinds of workplaces that we want in the future without damaging society? Um, that little phrase, damaging society, I picked up actually from the blurb for this event. Um, I thought it was quite a useful one because we do know that work can be extremely damaging um, for people's health and for mental health in particular, which is my theme today. Um, and if we're driving more and more towards productivity, there's a real danger that, that that actually can be quite damaging to people's health. So that's the main question today. Um, I'm going to run through very briefly a whistle-stop sort of tour, really, about our research. But I'll start with um, some of the evidence on the links between productivity and workplace mental health that exist. Um, a, an outline of our programme of research that we're doing at the Enterprise Research Centre on this theme on workplace mental health. Um, a snapshot of some of the evidence that we've got from our four waves of employer surveys that we've been doing, um, starting in uh, 2020 and running through to this year. Um, so some of the headlines from that. A brief word or two on some of the implications for practice and policy and uh, a, a very quick word on some of the next steps for our research. So to start on with what's, what's the kind of evidence on workplace mental health and productivity, um, Peter Cheese earlier on touched on a lot of these issues and a very powerful presentation, I thought. Um, so some of these issues we've already touched on today, but some of the evidence that we know, um, we know that there's increasing awareness that workplace mental health is rising up the agenda. The issues are becoming more widespread um, and there is a link with productivity. Um, back in uh, 2018, the um, BITC did a, well, I think they've done a series of surveys actually of employees um, looking at mental health issues and they found that 61% of employees have experienced mental health issues where work was a contributing factor. Um, again, back in 2017, there was a, a quite a significant report called the Stevenson and Farmer Review, which was um, done for the Department of Work and Pensions in the UK. Um, and they found that 300,000 employees lose their jobs annually due to mental health issues. Deloitte have done quite a bit of work trying to quantify the impact of mental health issues on businesses. Um, and they, have, in, 2000, in 2022, uh, they estimated that the, the cost to, bid to UK businesses was £56 billion from mental health issues. So the productivity impact is huge. And we also know, of course, um, the experiences of the last few years with the COVID-19 pandemic has had a huge impact on the mental health of the population. There's been lots of news articles and items pretty much every day. I think there's something on the news somewhere about mental health and how it's declining in the population. Um, so we know that that's also happening. Um, we know there are significant evidence gaps so we know there's a big problem, but we know there are a lot of evidence gaps about what employers can actually do about this situation, which seems to be kind of in a way spiralling out of control. Um, and it suggests there's a need for much stronger evidence about this and, and how, uh, how employers can actually tackle some of these problems to create better workplaces. So a, a few words about our programme of research. So um, we... We started all this work um, back in 20, well, 2019, actually. Um, we did a baseline survey of uh, just under 2,000 businesses based in the Midlands. And we did that um, for the, uh, an initiative called the Mental Health um, and Productivity Programme, which is a Midlands-based initiative um, involving a few Midlands-based universities and funded by the Midlands Engine. The idea of that initiative was to test out some initiatives which were based on evidence um, that might work in workplaces to improve employee mental health. So we were asked to do this survey. Um, we did it. We did it in, it, it sort of took place between January and March 2020. 
and literally the field work stopped the day before, I think, that we went into the first lockdown. So it was kind of good timing in, in lots of ways, um, as we found out. So we have a kind of really good um, pre-pandemic snapshot of mental health practices in, in the workplace. Obviously, then we knew that we were sitting on quite an important data set and we obviously lots of change happened over the, the subsequent years. So we managed to get funding um, very luckily from ESRC and also from Warwick University to do a couple more surveys. So we did one the following year in 2021 and then in 2022 um, of similar numbers of firms. So we're able to track some, the same kinds of questions with some new ones thrown in as well. Um, so we're building up a really good data set. And then we've done another survey this year as well. So we've got four rounds of, of data now. So we're building up a really good um, resource here. We've also got funding uh, for, from the ESRC for a major research project to continue this work and extend it. So the project's called Mental Health and Wellbeing Practices, Outcomes and Productivity, a causal analysis, which is a bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> that's its official name. Um, it was launched in April 2022, so we've started that work and that will run till 2025. Um, I won't go into too much detail because I know we're short of time, but basically this is a really exciting project. It's interdisciplinary. We've got people working from economics, from management studies, but also from occupational psychology. So it's been quite a new step for us at the centre to become truly interdisciplinary with working with um, psychologists, which we've never done before. So we're looking really at the causal processes now by which workplace mental health influences productivity. And we want to look at um, what works basically in terms of practices to improve it. So very quickly, some headline surveys from the um, findings from the 2023 survey, just to give you an idea of the kinds of things we're looking at and what we found. We found that uh, mental health sickness absence has increased a little bit since, the, um, since last year but it remains below pre-pandemic levels. But what we're finding is there's an issue with something we're calling presenteeism, by which we mean people, when people come to work, when they're sick, when they should be at home, and also working longer hours than they need to. So it's a combination of those two factors. And we're finding that that presenteeism has increased actually sharply. So this is a trend we're looking at um, and do, doing more research on at the moment. And it's surpassed um, the levels we found before the pandemic now. We found that the majority of employers actually acknowledge they have a responsibility to manage workplace mental health. So that's a positive thing. But we also find that they haven't formalised an approach to tackle it and um, put practices into place. Um, what practices do exist are quite informal. So we find about half of Firms have adopted some sort of mental health initiative and activity, but and more of them are actually training line managers in recent years, which is an encouraging development. Um, but there's a still still a very strong reliance on low cost initiatives. Um, we also found, obviously, in 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 our work that COVID nineteen has had um, a big legacy, and as Peter referred to earlier, has had a huge change in terms of working practices. So that's something that we're looking into the implications of and will continue to over the next few years, years of the research. Um, very quickly, I won't go through all these in detail because I know we're short of time, but um, I'm happy to talk about all this, obviously, after or to send slides or directly to where you can find more research. But there's a few charts here that um, I've managed to get a sector breakdown of some of the findings. So this is from the 2023 survey. Um, I mentioned that we found that mental health absence or sickness absence has gone up slightly um, this year from, from the last year, um, but it's still below the level we found at pre-pandemic. Um, we can see there that for all firms, the, the level of um, absence over the last year was 27%. In production or manufacturing, it is slightly lower at 24%. In terms of that presenteeism problem, so people working when they're ill or working beyond their contracted hours, um, we find that it's, this has really increased since the years of the pandemic. So we're now at 37% of firms saying that they have um, an issue with presenteeism over the last year amongst at least some of their staff. And we can see that, um, again, it, the sector breakdown in terms of production or manufacturing um, is kind of bang on the, the same sort of average level for all firms. They're at 37% of firms saying they've experienced presenteeism. 
We look also at employers' um, sense of responsibility for mental health issues in the workplace. So we ask this question, um, do you disagree with the statement, mental health is a personal issue and not which, one which should be addressed at work? Um, we find that most employers do think they have a responsibility um, to address workplace mental health, but there's a potential issue there, perhaps in the production sector or the manufacturing sector that we're seeing um, where less firms are, are disagreeing with that. In terms of provision of initiatives, we find that it's kind of overall remained kind of static through the four rounds of the surveys. Um, we find that around half of firms are providing some sort of initiatives, but it's not really changed that much. Um, again, here, the sector breakdown shows that the manufacturing sector is uh, slightly lower in terms of the, the likelihood that they, the provision of initiatives. As I mentioned before, we look at types of practices that have been put into place, and we see that most things are low cost or no cost. Uh, things like encouraging open conversations at work, which are easy to implement, I guess, uh, awareness raising, but we're less likely to see actual budgeted activities, um, mental health champions and training for line managers, although that has changed um, this year and has encouragingly gone up. I mentioned before COVID-19 working practice change. We've got some information on that and we can see obviously the, the rise of remote working, which we're all aware of. And it's just something that we need to consider in interpreting some of these changes and implications on mental health. So what are the, some of the implications from this research? Well, there are lots of implications. So we know that um, there are problems with presenteeism, which are increasing. There's issues with um, mental health related absence. Um, majority of firms are saying it's impacting on their business um, and that was particularly prevalent actually in manufacturing sector so that is interesting findings and um, we know that sickness is related to lower productivity so we're finding out a lot of important issues we know that most are not most are offering some slightly uh, a majority of firms are offering some kind of initiatives to help staff but there's a lot of room for improvement um, so Societal awareness has improved in terms of mental health issues, but they're actually not seeing much concrete action. Um, there's, there's a lot more that can be done. So we say there's a need to drive up the proportion of employers offering mental health initiatives at work um, and better equip the managers to deal with it. So the next steps, as I mentioned, we've got this research programme, which is really exciting. It's continuing until 2025 and maybe beyond. We're looking at a lot of future uh, research directions. So if you want to talk about something with me, find me and you know, say, you know, this is a really important issue. Could you follow it up? We may have the opportunity to do it because it's such a, a large data set. So we'll be doing a bit more interrogation of sectoral differences. Maybe we could look in detail at manufacturing and at the actual picture that's happening there um, and get a better understanding of things like presenteeism and also the impact of digital technology. Um, so we'll focus too on policy re recommendations in the next phase of research. So how can we drive up the proportion of employers offering initiatives? What kind of initiatives have the most impact? Um, and what are the opportunities really we've got with this project to drive change? So that's it. It's a very quick tour of a very large body of work, work but thank you and do, as I say, seek me out if you want to talk about it anymore. Thank you.